Welcome back, everybody, to the first Sprint Weekend. That's right, we are heading to Baku for episode number four of the brand new season in 2025. We've also got a couple upgrades on the car, which I'm going to show you now and show you how that's gone in terms of helping the car progress a little bit further. We've got a new suspension and we've got a new front wing on there, which has helped us in terms of our components and helping us with our cornering. If you actually look at the um, car part details, the low speed corner for this front ring is actually third on the grid. So a big upgrade in that regard. In terms of the overall car analysis, this is what, how things are looking right now. Again, we've got a little bit of a boost up in terms of our low speed and medium speed. Not too great on high speed at the moment. And we're still staying around 10th in the top 5 in terms of our overall top speed on the car as well. So hopefully that means more points to come in the sprint weekend. So, with that being said, let's get straight into it. Let's see what we can do in Baku. And yeah, fingers crossed, we can get some more points. So we finished qualifying for the sprint weekend because of course qualifying comes after one practice session and we've managed to finish in 5th and 7th for qualifying. So again, another fantastic qualifying result for us. Hopefully these new upgrades that we've got in the car are what's making the difference and not other people maybe slipping back. Um, maybe Hopefully we're taking the performance forward. Um, again, a few tenths off the top. Um, which again is a huge step forward for us really in terms of where we've been the past couple of seasons. So yeah, hopefully it can be another successful race. Maybe a couple of points in the sprint race as well. Let's see what we can do. And hopefully we keep out of trouble. So here we go then, folks. It's going to be 5th and 7th in the sprint race weekend. Let's see how it plays out and we go from there, basically. But yeah, it's a um, really positive result. Again, in qualifying, we, we had a great weekend in Australia. If you missed that episode, we managed to get our first ever podium with Ocon. Um, and again, hoping not necessarily for a podium again, but just for a decent haul of results. Anywhere in the top 10 would do for me. Um, and that shows you, hopefully, the progress that we're making as well. Um, and again, keeping out of trouble in this first lap. Again, the Red Bulls and the Ferraris will probably be far and away quicker than everybody else. Um, though we are sticking around with Perez quite well at the minute. Um, and Ocon's sticking with Russell quite well. So hopefully that continues. But yeah, just some real great progress seems to have been made with the car this season. Um, top line speed... Being in 10th or 9th is where we'd want it to be um, after the upgrades we've made. We've got a couple of upgrades being worked on now as well and in the form of a rear wing and I believe underfloor, if I've got that right. Um, so hopefully that will help us a little bit more with the top speed and a little bit with the cornering as well with how we've decided to upgrade them as we go down the inside of Perez there but don't quite make it stick. Um, so yeah. Positive times ahead, hopefully, for Alfa Romeo, and more points, hopefully. Um, as long as we keep ourselves out of trouble, we should be in a good spot come the end of this sprint race, and then hopefully we can have a really good full race as well. So let's see how we do in this sprint. And as we've got 15 laps to go, the Ferraris have drifted away, which isn't really a surprise, um, but the Merc of Signs has taken over us, and now Russell's looking in a pretty good position to try and take over as well. Um so yeah, maybe just drifting a little bit back, further back to where we should be on the grid. But again, if if we were, we are in the top 10 quite solidly because Giovinazzi's a couple of seconds back on us. So if we were 8th for 9th, I'd be w more than happy with that because that's where the performance of the car in terms of speed really is. So yeah, I'm not really complaining with where we're at at the moment. It's still points on the board. So that's what we've got to take from that in and progress into the weekend but yeah still a long way to go anything can happen 13 laps let's keep pushing as we make side by side there with russell and use the ers and drs to pull ahead and we move into lap five pushing on now to try and catch up with perez and signs the signs has made another overtake on the other ferrari teammate so again maybe the mercedes is there it's just maybe albon's not got the performance in him to pull it up the rankings um, like he should be doing. Um, but Sainz is clearly getting the most out of that Mercedes car at the minute. So we've got about eight laps left now, and we are still sitting in six. Still about half a second. We've pulled it back. We've been hovering around that sort of DRS level of about a second or so behind Russell. But now we're sort of getting a bit more consistency out of the car. We've cooled the tyres down again. We're obviously conserving the fuel a little bit. We're not doing massive 
stretches are conserving and we're doing it in spits and spots and it's coming down at the rate we'd want it to um and yeah we're, we're finding ourselves in a pretty good position here so again trying to focus on this gap with stroll more than we are about trying to catch up with russell and uh, because again stroll keeps getting in within a second to a half a second depending on how his previous lap goes um but again I think we're going to be in a really good spot come these last few laps. Um, again, everyone's on a pretty similar level of tyre wear, and we've made an overtake without even having to push on Russell. So, really good pace shown by Bottas. The other side of the garage, Ocon's chasing down Piastri at the moment. He's four and a half seconds ahead of Gasly, so don't really see him going out of the top nine, really, um, unless something drastic happens. But, again, we can try and push Ocon later on in the race and try and get him up uh, into that top eight position to get that final point in the sprint and with about six laps to go we've got a big crash and it's Gasly he was chasing down Ocon about four seconds gap and he's side by side with Norris heading into that that corner and he's just clipped the wall there that might be some engine damage as well not a great day at the office there for Gasly as he drops back down to 17th and yeah, that gap between ourselves and Norris now is about five seconds. So, again, just got to keep going with with what the uh, strategy is and see if we can push on to Piastri by the end of this race. And again, side by side with, with George going down the main straight, kept behind for the DRS. And we've made it stick. It's now about 1.3 seconds to the podium positions. So, again, a great bit of driving here from Valtteri and he's doing the task well. And yeah, we're just getting ourselves into position for this sort of final push and maybe we can make the most of it. So yeah, let's see how we go. So again, just on the outside of the DRS, we might get ourselves back into it with five laps to go. And again, we're just showing that being in the race right now, I've got four laps. Another podium, I know it's not technically a podium in a sprint race, but another top three finish would be fantastic in the circumstances that we're in. So let's keep pushing and see what we can do. And on the other side of the garage, we've got Ocon trying to push onto Piastri and make an overtake here. Going on full attack, ducking down the inside. Not a usual overtaking spot, that one that I've seen before in F1 Manager. But we'll certainly take it. And we're going to use the ERS and the attack mode on the tyres as much as we can. Again, keeping Bottas within that DRS of Perez. And there we go. The overtake has been made. And now it's just whether or not can he push on and try and open a gap between himself and Piastri and seal off this final points place. And as you can see, with three laps to go, still in the fight for the top three. Again, similar amounts of time separating sort of everybody from third to seventh. So it shows you how tight this battle behind the front two really is. And again, Red Bull running, probably going to run away with the championship as long as they stay out of each other's way. Um, and yeah, we're going to get ready to push with Bottas because he is drifting back a little bit. I'm just going to push him on. And hopefully we'll be able to make up some, some pace, some positions. And uh, yeah, finish the race strong. That's the hope. Again, these two are squabbling ahead in Sainz and Perez. We've got two laps to go. And we've opened the gap to Perez. Piastri's right on the tail of, of uh, Ocon again. So we can get him to push again. And yeah, it's going to be a tight finish on both sides of the garage. But position's where we want to be, really. Let's be honest. So here we are then. DRS open. Final lap. Verstappen is starting it with two ten separating him and his teammate, Leclerc. And we go down the outside on signs. And we move up into fourth. And now we're on to the back of Perez. And signs again. It's going to be a bit of a drag race here to the end. But we're going to hold on to the ERS for as long as we can and use that to try and push us forward. Again, Ocon's two point something seconds in front of Piastri, so don't really need to push him right now. But again, just hoping that Bottas can hold on to this. We might. It's going to be a drag race right down to the finish. Four seconds separating us and the Red Bulls after this amount of time. Shows you how dominant they are, probably will be in the in the race. In the full race, I should say. So here we go then. Full deploy. Can we make it to the line in front of Perez? It's going to be close. 
He's right behind, but we managed to seal it. We get top three again. And it's a double points finish in the sprint race for us, which is excellent stuff. And again, again, I say it, if we got anything remotely close to this in the full race, I'd be ecstatic. If we got a double points finish, I'd be ecstatic again. So positive signs for tomorrow. So there you go then. Top three confirmed. Seven points in total. And that'll help us in no end. Again, that, I think that puts us to within 12 points of what we got last year. So showing you the huge difference that we've had in this season so far in comparison to the last year. So here we go then. Full race. We start in third and eighth. Can we make the most of this position? Again, we qualified up here because of because of pit issues and uh, pen pit pen grid penalties is what I'm trying to say, sorry, uh, from last season. But this year we're there outright because that's where we finished in the sprint, which is a totally new position for us to be in. And again, we want to try and make sure this start is as strong as possible. And it's looking like that that's going to be the case. The two Red Bulls practically side by side with each other all the way through this first part of the race. And in terms of strategies, there's a mixture all over the grid. Again, both sides of the garage doing totally different things. We're starting on the softs with Bottas and finishing on the mediums, while starting on the mediums with Ocon and finishing on the softs. So, again, looked at a two-stop, but it didn't really make sense um, with the mediums and softs. You're practically not getting any use out of them. So, yeah, that's where it currently stands at the moment as we are in the top three. And looking good so far. As we get towards the end of lap two now, as you can see, Bottas and Russell side by side with each other with signs not far behind. And DRS is going to be enabled now. And I just wonder, is this where it starts to maybe fall away for us a little bit as the bigger manufacturer cars start to get the DRS? But again... We know these tyres can go a long distance. They had plenty of tyre performance left in them by the time we got to the end of the sprint yesterday. And we were pretty much aggressive for half of it. So we shouldn't be too worried. And as long as we keep Ocon sort of in around that top 10 area, I think once we get him onto softs, we could be onto a winner with Ocon's strategy as well. So yeah, it's uh, looking good so far. We're three laps down and 48 to go. Again, going into neutral with the ERS and trying to preserve that a little bit more. Almost two seconds of gap already. Four laps in between Russell and the two Red Bulls. Again, it, I think it was about a four or five second gap by the end of the sprint race. So not surprised that they're sort of running away with things. It's just a case of do them two get in the way of each other. Or are they actually going to work as a team and pull themselves away? Um, but yeah, we, if we, as long as we stick with Russell, which we know we can do, we should be, we should be in a good spot to come the end of the race. As we go side by side with the DRS and make that overtake stick. And again, the gap to Red Bull now over two seconds. So again, we're not going to push Bottas to try and chase down the Red Bulls. That's not the race. The race is to try and solidify as high as possible up this grid. And again, Russell side by side, jostling with us as the two Red Bulls are jostling side by side up ahead, heading in towards the castle. And again, two seconds gap. We're not really pushing as well, so... Part of me is wondering that if we get that ERS up and we do go on a bit of a push for a couple of laps, would we be able to catch up to the Red Bulls? But I'm going to just see how it develops over the next few laps and we'll take it from there. But again, we're doing really well here. Top three. Ocon's still fighting in for top eight. Considering the guys above him are on, on softs. Again, Sainz chewing through the soft tyres at the minute. So we'll be interested to see how he copes with that. But again, as long as we hang around that sort of top 10 area with Ocon, once we get the softs on, I think we'll be on to a winner come the, end of the, uh, come the end of the race. Again, DRS open, getting back in front of Russell. And now is the moment where I'm going to push him and see what he can do in terms of trying to close that gap down on the two Red Bulls. See if we can open a gap up to Russell. Yellow flag gets flagged, though. There's been a big shunt. Schumacher has crashed on turn three. So again, 
Schumacher and Haas are going to start having problems, I think, because, they are, again, it's pretty similar to what happened with Gasly, but I don't think you'll have... Oh, low saying that half his front wing's gone, so kind of a, more damage than I would expect, really, with that sort of shunt, but he's going to be okay, I think. And again, we can keep pushing on and seeing how we can close that. And again, we've closed the gap down to about 1.1 seconds, and we've had another crash on track. Piastri this time has crashed. Let's see what he's done. Now this was the seventh corner. And again, another combo of teammates getting each other's way. And Piastri goes into the wall and holds everything up. Should be able to get going again from there, surely, though. As we've got the gap down to about a second on the Red Bull. So Valtteri really punching above his weight right now. And is in showing how fine the form he is in in this car. And let's keep going. So we're 10 laps in now, and again, the rest bull, Red Bulls, rest bulls? The Red Bulls are jostling, sorry about that, um, um, between each other. It's about half a second between Bottas and the top two. Again, we're keeping Russ out of DRS as well, and he's currently battling away with his Ferrari teammate. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we can carry this on, but the signs are positive right now. So as you can see now, we've started to drift away again from the Red Bulls, a lap or so on from the last update. And Perez is now starting to gain on us, as is Russell. But again, it's a, it's the worst case scenario for us, without mistakes happening, from Bottas' side of the garage, is, I think, is a top five. Because I think with Sainz chewing up the tyres the way he is, we'll be well in front of him by the time it comes to pits and things like that. And I think there's performance in the car that we can keep pushing on um, and try and executing on and, and seeing where we get to. Again, the last push sort of got a bit disjointed because of the fact that we had yellow flags flag up. So there's a bit of stop and start on my approach. Um, and again, you can see, once we start to push, we can open that gap up pretty quickly. We're already up to almost a second on Perez uh, and closing back down to under two seconds on Verstappen. So again, it's a, we're only 12 laps in, but there's a lot to go and a lot to do in this race. And Ocon's only half a second back on Stroll as well. So... There's really no complaints from either side of the garage here. And we've just pumped in a fastest lap as well. So fantastic performance so far. Two seconds gap now to Perez. Half a second back on Verstappen and gaining. And we've made a move around the outside, but we don't quite make it stick as we go to the inside again. And no, Verstappen just about holds us off. But again, fantastic first stint here from Bottas. Not that I'm that surprised really by the past few races. And a really dangerous overtake there from Perez, but he's managed to make it stick as he overtakes us at the castle, and we drop down to fourth. But again, really happy with what Bottas is doing. Half and two seconds back on Verstappen. Perez is now sort of trying to pull away. Um, I think he's on the softs. Yes, he is. Both him and Russell are on the softs. So both Ferraris running the same strategy. But with DRS, hopefully we can hang on to the back of, back of Perez and... Uh, let him drag us up the up closer to the Red Bulls, if possible. And we're not even going to do that. Valtteri doesn't want to wait around. He's, <laughs> he says, go, go, go. And keeps making his way through the grid. But again, Perez now side by side. Again, don't want to waste too much time with it. As you can see. Very close between the two guys. And hopefully the experienced duo will be able to keep it clean. And I've just noticed the gap, actually. Russell's four seconds back now, so hopefully we can stay in this battle with Perez and, and solidify this top four finish, hopefully. DRS open here on lap 19, and we pull ahead again. Again, only two and a half seconds behind the Red Bulls. We'll use the ERS to try and pull ahead if we can. I don't know how much of a gap we might be able to open up over Perez, if any. But, again, you may as well use the ERS while you've got it. Um... Again, we've opened up the gap to Russell to about 7.8 seconds. So, again, doing a phenomenal jog. Jog? Job. Sorry. My word. My vocabulary today is terrible. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But uh, Ocon's doing a really good job of hanging around that top 10. Again, I think the second half of his race is where he's probably going to be more effective being on the softs. Um, and he's probably going to make a few positions up with pits and stuff. So, I'm hoping that's what's going to happen. Um as long as he doesn't get dragged into sort of those 11, 12 positions where there is a bit more of a uh, uh, a pack tightening together. And Sainz is the first one to to blink and comes in for a pit stop. 
and goes on to mediums. So Ocon jumps up to seventh, and Bottas, of course, stays in in the position we knew we'd be in. So, yeah, it's um, 20 laps down, almost halfway through the race. Everything still to play for, even a race win if things went really well for us. So Bottas heading into lap 23, which is his optimum pit stop. He's going to be going on the push for this one. The box is and we're going to get him to do as quick an in-lap as possible. Again, the, the gap has drifted to about five seconds on the Red Bulls. But again, like I've said a million times already, not really surprised by that. It's just whether or not we can maintain a good gap to Russell and Perez. Again, Ocon's starting to reel in Stroll as well. So that'll, if he gets into the battle for that, that's a top six finish for him. I think Russell might be a little bit too out of bounds for him, depending on how the strategy goes for Ocon. But again, he's doing a really good job. Again, top 10 is the minimum expectation now, I think, with the way the car is at the moment. Obviously, if the performance starts to drift away in the middle of the part of the season, we'll reassess that. But yeah, top 10 for Ocon, and I'm happy with him because he's supporting Bottas at the moment. So yeah, this in-lap has gone pretty well for Bottas, and he's going to come in now for his pit stop as Perez comes in as well. So a nice quick pit stop. Keep us ahead of Perez. 2.5. And it does the job. It keeps us in front. And Russell's coming as well. So Ocon moves up into fourth. So again, we're having another teammate quandary potentially coming up. But we're getting Ocon to move out of the way and hopefully block off Perez. Has he done it? Yes, he has. So again, try to use Ocon as a bit of a buffer for Bottas and try and open up that gap if we can and see what we can do with that. But again, he's got a couple more laps lock on and then he'll be pitting, so... So far, so good. We've got Perez now side-by-side side with Bottas. And he just looks like he's just pulled it away there, Perez. And... Again, it might be a bit of a struggle now for Bottas to keep in front or to keep in, in time with him as Verstappen and Leclerc are both pitting, so... A Red Bull harming themselves maybe a little bit by pitting both guys. But you can see Perez just pulling away now and making the most of this. And Stroll comes in for his pit now. So we move back up to third. And we'll see how long this plays out for then. So we've got about five seconds gap between us and Perez. Leclerc now gets in front. And is that the top three? As Ocon has a pit stop issue, unfortunately. And that drops him down to 13th. So Ocon's got a bit of work to do to try and pick himself back through the field. So we've got about 20 laps to go. And as you can see, Ocon's making an overtake on Stroll. Very interesting choice of tyres from Stroll there because he's on hards. Don't know if he ran out of allocation or something. But yeah, being on hard tyres at this point in the race is, a, is an interesting choice. Um... And again, we might be able to make up the time on Joe and, and Sainz pretty quickly, I think, uh, based on the fact that Sainz is already on 75% mediums and Joe himself is on 81% soft. But again, we're the pace we've shown this weekend, we are much quicker than the Alpines. So again, I'd expect an overtake maybe in the next DRS lane or two. And if we doesn't make it by then, probably in the next lap or two. And in lap 33, Ocon's looking for a move. And Shaw tries to defend it on the outside. And again, he's not giving it up, the young Chinese driver. But again, Ocon trying to just find a way past, heading in towards the castle now. Is he going to make it stick or are we going to have an incident here? No. Oh, it's side-by-side -side racing. You'd love to see it. Maybe not Maybe not my perspective, but as a neutral, you'd probably like to see that sort of thing. But it's now four seconds gap. Four and a half seconds to Russell now, so... Going to try and get up the road, though I expect Joe's going to come back here, and he is. Let's just p go a bit aggressive on the tyre and try and uh, help Ocon a little bit here. As Joe just pulls away with the use of DRS and gets that gap back up to 6.10, so Joe making a bit of a nuisance of himself. And the gap just starts to decline ever so slightly on Russell in front of us, so yeah. We'll keep pushing and see what we can do. 17 laps to go. Top four pretty much confirmed as long as we don't make a mistake with Bottas. And it's just how high can we get Ocon. Looking down the inside again with Ocon. Not going to quite make it. Almost touching the back end of 
Jules Cart, and as you can see, the top two were free. There is a battle going on between Perez and Leclerc. We're well back on that, though, so we shouldn't be worrying about that right now. 16 laps to go. Verstappen's in the lead. He's on the softs. Again, we've not seen much degradation on this track, so we'll expect those tyres to be in a good position. So Zocon makes an overtake on Joe, heading into the castle as well. So another overtake, side by side. And into the castle. Let's see if we can make that stick. You can see Stroll just hovering behind, waiting for something to happen and a gap to open up or an opportunity to present itself. And we've just overlapped Schumacher with Bottas. And again, we've just gone on a bit of a harder push on the medium tyres just to see if we can get that gap closed down a little bit. We've gone down to about three and a half seconds, but again, I think that's the most we can, we can hope for at this point. Um, again, if them two keep... If Leclerc and Perez keep swabbling and we can push at the right moments, then maybe we might be able to make up that time. But at the moment, we aren't really making up time on Russell either on Ocon's side of the guard. So maybe this is probably the most we can expect. Shaw's really doing well to hang around. Stroll's only a half a second back on us. So again, we've got to be careful with Ocon not to try and uh, overdo it too much um, and end up losing maybe a couple more positions of points where we might be able to, you know push on for maybe top six or something like that but you can see Russell's comfortably in front of signs he's on 62% tyres so again there's maybe another position available but I don't want to lose it in the pursuit of jostling around with Joe and Stroll so hopefully Ocon isn't going to make another mistake before the end of this race and so with that being said despite that update we've just given you we've now opened up the gap to between ourselves and Joe to about a second and a half and the gap to us and signs is now down to just under two seconds. Stroll's now gaining a little bit, so I'm just wondering if the hard tyre is maybe getting a little bit quicker than the soft one. Um, we'll have to see. But again, we've got 11 laps to go. Can we get that sixth position and hold back, hold back Stroll? It's going to be a difficult one, but we should be able, we should be able to at least get in front of signs. I think, because Sainz's tyres are at 59%. Um, but again, we're going to have to conserve a little bit in terms of the fuel because we're at one and a half kilos. So you can see we're trying to get push Ocon in front of Stroll here. We've got 10 laps to go. And again, I'm hoping we can close this gap down to signs as well as obviously extend the gap to Stroll to back over a second. And with a short stint on uh, pushing a little bit harder on these soft tyres. Um, but again, Stroll's showing great pace in the Aston Martin. He's been really consistent over these first few races. Solidly top 10 every time, if not pushing for podiums. Um, and again, he's doing really well in in that car. Um, Piastri was doing relatively well. This is probably his worst race by far, so far. But you can see that Ocon's made up so much time pushing on this lap. And he's on the back of signs already. And hopefully, if we can get in front of signs sooner rather than later, we can use him as a bit of a buffer um, between ourselves and Stroll. Again, cool everything down, recharge, conserve the fuel a bit more. And yeah, get ready for sort of a, a big push to get in front of Russell and see if we can extend that over him. And there you see Ocon going side by side now with Russell. 60% in terms of soft tyres, 63% in terms of Russell. So pretty similar. Stroll might be the winner out of this though with the hard tyres. I was initially scratching my head thinking, is it really the right choice? But... If he can make that time up on signs, he's going to be right on the back of Russell um, sooner rather than later. So, yeah, we're just hoping that Ocon can keep this gap open between himself and Russell and extend that um, and see see this out because we will take fourth and fifth. Um, from third and fourth in Australia to fourth and fifth in Baku, it's an excellent result all around for the team and that's really what we're pushing for. So we've opened the gap up between ourselves and Russell to about 2.4 seconds, four laps to go. The other thing to make note of, potentially, um, depending on how the pace goes with Bottas' tyres, is that we have lowered this time down to Perez to about 2.2 seconds. I am sort of in two minds as to whether or not we should go for it. Um, I don't want to push too much and then cause Bottas to make a mistake and then lose fourth position, although obviously Ocon's primed to, to take that up at this point. But I, f I do think that... Uh, the if we can maybe cool the tyres down and get the ERS to the right spot, we might be able to do a mad push on a couple of laps and see if we can catch up to Perez and, and just nab that third place off him. Um, but again, it's going to take 
a monumental effort, I think, from Bottas to make that stick because I think Perez will come back right back at him. So we're overlapping Sargent now, heading into the last few laps. We make that pretty easily with Ocon. And again, you're just watching Bottas now, trying to keep that gap relatively low to Perez. I don't think we'll be able to catch him, though, unfortunately. I just don't think he's got the life in the tyres to be able to do a mad push. Or the DRS, or ERS, I should say. Um, but again, we've opened up that gap to about four seconds to stroll and Russell, and we're looking good on fuel, so we just have to coast, coast it home, not make any mistakes, and we should have another big points hole, and within, what, four races, we'll be above what we had in one entire season in Season 2, so, and of course, Season 1 as well, we'll have beaten um, by the fact that we beat it in Season 2, so yeah, fantastic result overall, we just need to hold on to this, and yeah, not make any mistakes. And there we go then, folks. It will be 2.7 seconds off the podium, but it'll be another excellent finish to the race, fourth and fifth from the boys in the Alfa Romeo garage. We managed to just manage that gap to stroll. He managed to cut it down to just over a second on Ocon, but we pushed on the last lap and managed to get it back up to 2.6. So, again, a fantastic result for the team. And, yeah, it's... Uh, High times indeed at Alfa Romeo. So there you go then. Confirmation of the final results. 33 points in the bag for Alfa Romeo. Again, only 2.7 seconds off of the Ferrari of Sergio Perez. Max winning another Grand Prix Leclerc in second. And yeah, just a fantastic result overall. And in terms of the Drivers' Championship, George keeps his nose in front by five points. And Valtteri is up to the top five at the moment, beating signs out by two points. And Esteban's also in the top ten with 28. Constructors-wise, we're on 70 points. We're 10 points ahead of what we had in Season 2 as a whole. The whole of Season 2, we only scored 60 points. We're on 70 within four races, so that shows you how well we've been doing so far in this season. And long may that continue. So, with that being said, let's take a look at the pit stops. We got top five with Valtteri's, so that keeps us in seventh with ten extra points. So, yeah, great race overall, as I'm sure you'll agree. And in a rare occurrence, we have a pretty good condition in terms of the car. No real damage to it. Maybe a new ERS might be needed um, for Bottas in the next few races, but apart from that, everything's relatively okay. Everything passed the tests. Everything's looking good, so yeah, we'll just have to see how it plays out in the next couple of races. Um, but yeah, what a fantastic result. Again, really happy with where we're at in terms of the car, um, in terms of performance and things like that. Where I don't think we can be doing much better. Um, I think in terms of upgrades, it's just trying to maintain what we've got at the minute and maybe improve a little bit in terms of a few areas. But again, we're above, we're above just above sort of the middle pack in terms of the grid average so if we keep that going then the next couple of races could be good races again um, and if we can keep that low speed relatively in the middle we might have a good Miami Grand Prix and then a good Monaco Grand Prix shortly after as well so it's all looking really positive at the moment um, the only thing that I am a bit worried about is in terms of the finances because we don't have a big spend in terms of what we had overall we do have about 94 remaining in terms of the cost cap. Projected is to be about 81 million if we didn't do anything else other than what's already happening. So that's one thing, obviously, to keep a lookout for. We might see a bit of a lull in the middle of the season where maybe upgrades aren't quite happening. But with that being said, we are pacing the upgrades a little bit more. So we do have an underfloor and a rear wing upgrade being worked on at the moment. And then the new ATR period comes in in six days so by the time we get to the end of the next couple of grand prix we'll be able to then put in a couple of more upgrades and then vice versa and just sort of overlap them a little bit um, and try and just keep a steady progression rather than trying to push the car with upgrades early on in the atr windows um, and in terms of research for the car towards the end of this season i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave the research right till the end um, and obviously have the car at its highest performance and then do the research to try and maintain that performance in the car because i think i did two 
some research parts a little bit too early. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see obviously how that works out in terms of finances and stuff. But again, positive signs for the rest of the season, um, and hopefully, hope. Well, I think, I think for definite, we'll be above top seven by the end of the year. I mean, there's already a what forty six gap, forty six point gap between ourselves and McLaren and Alpine. So I think we should at least be aiming for top five. Based on what we're at, where we're at currently, obviously things can drastically change in, in Formula One. We see it happen with Aston Martin and IRL, but I think that's what the aim is for this year. And you can see Esteban's gone up to an 88 as well, so his progression's going really well. And yeah, we'll have to see how it continues. But yeah, hopefully Miami, we have a good result and we keep this train rolling. As always, guys, if you have enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We're about nine away from the big 800, so we'd love any help on that end of the stick of subscribers. So yeah, let's see what we can do in the next race and I will see you in Miami.